Awesome. If there's All more right. tomorrow, so, I don't know if I'm going to be doing either of those things. Here we are at the pre to still hang out with Jim Weirick, John K. Paul, and John Mertick. Um, hanging out with our speakers for the Distill Conference happening in San Francisco on Treasure Island, August 8th and 9th. Tickets still available at distill.engineyard.com. Um, so let's do this in alphabetical order. So I think that's fair. Jim, that puts you kind of on the stand right away. You're giving a talk about kinescence. That's correct. Do you want to give us a little brief overview of what that means? So kinescence, it's, it's uh, another word for coupling. It means that if you have two pieces of software and piece number one changes, and the fact that it changes forces you to make a change in the second piece of software, there's some kind of connection between them. Uh, we call that kinescence. And then we can categorize different types of connaissance. You know, is it because a name changed? Is it because some positional element changed? Is it because the algorithm changed? So we can categorize these, and it's kind of like it's, it's kind of like coupling, but I think it's a more fundamental concept than, than what we normally think of as coupling. Right on. And uh, I've seen you give this talk before, and I actually think I should mention that. This time you're going to be straightforward about it because the last time I saw you give the talk, um, you tricked people. I did. I'm sorry. Um, this was at RailsConf in Baltimore. I want to say 2011. Uh huh. Where you had a, you were you you'd convinced everyone you were giving a talk about. I don't even remember what it was, but everyone was going to see and they were interested. And you were like, and that's what I'm not talking about. Boop. We're going to talk about <laughs> kinescence. And I don't so, remember that at all. Luckily, this time we're going to be. Never heard the word kinescence before. That could be true for anything. <laughs> yes, exactly. Unless, unless we know the definition, kinesis is is up in the air. Abs exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, that's what made me say this guy knows what no he knows what's up. He's got it going so, on. So this talk is going to be a little bit different than the ones you've seen before. In that, I'm going to just briefly spend some time defining what kinescence means to catch everybody up to the ideas. But then I'm going to look at some protocols and analyze them in terms of kinescence. And then I think I have a fun protocol picked out that will be, uh, uh, be interesting for the audience to look at, and, and we'll have some fun with it. Cool. Well, I, I, for one, am looking forward to it, and hopefully I'll be able to catch it. I know that I will also be running around and doing stuff, so mm. it'll be hard to, so, hard to say. Um, I, I, I will try to not pull the switcheroo this time for you. How about that? If, if you do that, I'm going to be very, very upset. Now I almost have to do it. Let me think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's gonna to fill his time. I started watch. He'll fill his time with 45 minutes of ukulele lessons. Evan, bring your ukulele. Totally. It'll be an I'm, important learning experience. I'm bringing, I'm bringing mine. I plan to bring mine. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm bringing... I don't know if I'm bringing a guitar or having one provided, but I'm supposed to serenade Shanley Kane. So if you guys want to be serenaded after your talks, please get your requests in now. So we're doing uh, yeah, ukuleles and, and giant chess. Yeah, ukuleles, giant chess, and cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, John Mertick, your turn. Um, your, your talk is about four web technologies we need to know about right now. Yes. I managed yeah. to keep that clean and not swear that time. Well, that's not too bad. Uh, <laughs> no, I... So... so I, I've, I, I've spent a lot of time, I've been kind of moving into this role, into the solutions architect role, and one of the things that I end up doing is over, looking at technology from a, from a higher, like, 30,000-foot level and kind of seeing some of the patterns and use cases that are really starting to form um, over those times and kind of how the web technologies evolved. And it's really been interesting. Like, I, I think since the... The theory I kind of stick out there is since REST and HTML5 have really become a lot of the standard um, fare for web developers, it seems like we've really hit this kind of renaissance period um, of, of really blowing out some really interesting technologies and interesting ways to solve problems. But the interesting thing is, is we're actually solving problems along the same way that the web was designed versus kind of using a, the web as a, a way, you know, a means to an end, right? So the one interesting kind of thing that, that I, I, I'm going to throw out there to kind of challenge the audience, and I don't want to kind of give away too much of my talk here because it's, it's a new Yeah, don't. No spoilers. No spoilers. But the one thing I want people to think about coming into this is, when is the last time you wrote a web page? And if you think about it, and, and 
think about that a little bit, and then and then come to my talk, and I'm going to kind of dissect that a little bit of how the web has changed over time, and really what we're what we're now building versus what we used to build. Very cool. Very cool. So what you're saying is more of a, a flexibility when we think about how the web can be used, um, as opposed to kind of staying in that same dogmatic behavior and, and re repeating ourselves. Yeah, and actually, and actually working with the web, the web, the, main, the web, the way the web was made to be worked with. You know, right? Think, think of soap versus rest, and that's kind of like the argument in there, right? Right on. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So I'm not gonna. Uh, I'll I'll stop there because I don't want you to. Uh, I don't want you to spoil everything. Cause then nobody will show up. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll swing it over to John Paul, John K. Paul of the New York, New York, John K. Pauls. Um, and John, your talk is about bad things. Yes, horrible, horrible things. As sensationally horrible as I could possibly get. <laughs> awesome, Sorry. tell us a little bit about it. Sure, I need, I need to get over stopping thinking about rest versus soap. I, I have bad memories from before, so now that I'm back, I'm listening, I'm good. So my talk is, uh, I also don't really want to give too many things away, but it's basically about what a lot of people consider to be the, uh, the uh, you know, a language that has a lot of nooks and crannies to get enraveled in and, and rabbit holes to go down. And the, from, from a lot of the hate that people could have with JavaScript, there are some key, really bad parts that I, as, as a huge JavaScript fan, would love to talk about how to help fix those particular issues and... Uh, fancy things in the new version of JavaScript that might assuage some worries about people following the path down to JavaScript Nirvana. Uh, <laughs> there, there, are, there are many bad parts. There are bad parts in every language. Uh, the, hopefully the audience has seen uh, or at least heard of the Good Parts book, JavaScript the Good Parts by Douglas Crawford. I'll be uh, dissecting some of those things, explaining my opinions, and uh, you can troll me about it all later. Oh, I shall. God, I'm glad. I feel free. Possibly, possibly in a panda suit. That's a whole other story, though. Okay. I don't want to give too much away either. But uh, no, no, so I really, I'm curious. Okay. Um, well, John Urhot, who just joined the call, because apparently we needed to meet our John quota um, of four. Wait a minute. Does absolutely everybody except for Evan and Kevin have a J in their name? Tasha. Tasha might not have a J in her name. Well, Evan and Kevin rhyme, so that's kind yeah. Of well, that's, a, that's the only way to get hired at Engine Yard. You have to have a well, name like Evan or Kevin. But Evan is a form of John, so then we're just screwed all around. Oh, man, that's a good point. <laughs> it's like, can we ask what the PJ is, or is that like, like you just that's, never... It's not, it's not a huge secret. It's, it's oh, Patrick okay. James. Oh, okay. It's not Patrick John, because that would be like... No, that would be... Oh, that'd be over the top. You should have just lied, man. I should have. I should have. We could call Joe Captain John at this point, because Joe's got the whole pirate thing going on. That's true. Arr. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the panda suit story. So John Urhot, who just joined the call, who we can call AC, because he is the Slater, um, suggested that we have a panda suit for Distill based on um, our panda group that does the uh, the onboarding for new customers for Engine Yard. And... Uh, so if we do that, I might actually get into a panda suit and run around. Possibly during your talks, if not in between them. Awesome. Please come to mine in the panda suit. I'll work it in. <laughs> We're going to make this happen. This yes. is going to happen for real. But, uh, all right, I'm going to go now in reverse order. So John K. Paul, um, you've, you've seen the distilled lineup. I mean, beyond being a speaker, what are you most looking forward to? That is Besides me. Besides you, besides everyone. So, <laughs> I think we just lost your audio, John. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now I can hear you. Hello. Yep. Yep. You're there. Uh, I can hear some things. All right. I can hear you. If anybody, if anybody can't hear John K. Paul, raise your hand. Oh, uh, now I cool. So now I'm very interested in understanding capacience. Capacience. What was the name? Canescence. Canescence. Yes, because it, I so it means I'm born together. Okay. 
So that's what it means in Latin or something? Yeah. So a lot of my own interests lie in, in figuring out how to architect large JavaScript applications that you can have the same kind of confidence that, that the, the, the canonical Java person really has around, I can make change in one place and I have the confidence that I'm not going to break elsewhere. A lot of my own uh, thinking is about that, in particular, particularly related to JavaScript and how you know, as much test-driven culture we can drive toward making sure that happens. And thinking about how that, I mean, there is some science behind this that's very interesting that I know nothing about. So I'm excited to hear more about that. Very cool. All right, John Murtick, what, what are you most looking forward to other than your own talk? Right, well, <laughs> I don't know how much I'm looking forward to my own talk, but no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm really, I, I, love, I love the community aspect of conferences. And for me, this is really interesting because I've, I've traditionally participated in a lot of conferences in the PHP world, um, or they're very PHP-centric, so they come from that background. Mm -hmm. um, and so this will be kind of one of the first conferences I've participated in that is very cross-discipline, um, not only just across languages, but, you know, I'm really excited. You know, some of the speakers are project managers um, and kind of folks like that. And I think it, it's, really, it's really important to have a lot of those kind of cross-discipline conversations um, that you can kind of participate and learn more about um, versus kind of always kind of hearing the, the same people you're used to in your same sort of communities and circles. So I'm really excited about that. Right on. Yeah, and I, 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 totally, I totally agree with that. Um, one of the things that got me excited about the project initially is uh, we wanted, like, they, the, the, the person who came up with it and, and was developing it came to us and said, you know, who wants to join in? And they said, it's not going to be about Ruby. And I said, okay, you've piqued my interest. I said, and it's not going to be about PHP. And I was like, oh, well, now you're just talking insanity, and now I want to see how it's going to work out. Yeah. <laughs> you're talking about a language agnostic conference, and we decided it's not actually language agnostic. It's just not language specific. Yeah. Um, people have solutions that are in a language, but that's, that's the tools on your belt. Mm -hmm. That's the tools in your toolbox. That's not the problem and the solution, and I think that's, that's the exciting part there. And I think and I think we're finding that more people are having to become more cross discipline than ever before, um, and especially, you know, especially as the tool sets are diversifying. That it's not always the tool that's in it, that's in the language or comfort zone that you're used to is the one that you need to use in order to get the job done. You're going to need to kind of branch out and learn some different things. So absolutely, I, having the right yeah. tool for the job. Yeah, but the beautiful thing is all of us are unified kind of around one aspect. And that is beer. Uh, yeah, I'll agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or any any fermented libation. I only have water. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. You're you're warming up. Yeah, that's the proper here. I also have water because I had a ridiculously horrible dental situation earlier. So that's pretty much all I've had all day. Uh, um, if I seem a bit loopy, it could be why. <laughs> um, Jim, what are you most looking forward to? Well, I, I got to tell you that um, I told my family about this conference, and actually, we're, the whole family's coming out for a, a week, and we'll, I'll be awesome. there a few days before, and I'm going to be hanging out at our office in San Francisco that I haven't even been to yet. And I told I told the family it's going to be on Treasure Island. And you go, <laughs> what? Is that a real place? I looked it up in the map. I said, yes, it is. It's an actual island called Treasure Island. <laughs> And so we are all excited about coming to Treasure Island. That's I have fantastic. no idea what's on Treasure Island, but I think it's a cool place that we have to visit. Well, I, I can tell you this. There will be a scavenger hunt there. Oh, nice, nice. Um, so that's, there will be... Marks a spot? Yeah, supposedly there will be a lot of different things that you need to find in order to win various treasures, as it were. Okay, so yeah, in the end it will be I'm a scavenger hunt. Now. now you're ready. I'm ready now, absolutely. Joe is, Joe is ahead of the game, but now, now he's the cat in the hat, so that works too. Um, but yeah, that's actually going to be part of it. I would, I would highly recommend, Jim, that you rent a boat to just drive you all around the bay and make the kids oh. think that maybe you've gone far, and then you arrive at Treasure Island, and you're like, oh, look, here we are. Oh, that's a cool idea. Treasure Island have a dock? Um, to the best of my knowledge, yes, because I am yeah, planning it, on... Does it, Jacob? It, it does have a dock, absolutely. 
Yeah, because I know that Samat said that we could sleep on his boat at the dock at the conference. I'm booking a cruise right now. Actually, I, I think if you look at the video we just published, um, I think you can even see part of the dock. Oh, awesome. I'm going to rewatch the video. By the way, if you guys haven't seen the distilled video, um, take a look at my Twitter stream. I tweeted about it like five times. It was just absolutely amazing. Um, absolutely hysterically amazing. Um, and actually, Jacob, who was just speaking a minute ago, is, is featured in said video. Um, so let me open it up. Does anybody else other than me who can talk until everybody falls asleep, does anybody else have any questions? Anybody at all? Evan, Joe, Jacob, Tasha? I can keep making up questions. That works too. I don't know. I wish I could be there. Sounds awesome. Joe, you should really make it out. There's got to be a way you can do it. It would be nice. Well, hey, you know, uh, plan for it next year. All right. That sounds fair. Submit a talk next year. Uh, I think I will. Right on. But Thank yeah, you, so Jacob, for the extremely precise directions to the docks <laughs> from the winery. I'm glad to know that I could move from one to the other seamlessly. That's that's the whole plan. Actually, it's not even moving from one to the other. You are in the winery. You will ah. never be out of the winery unless we step outside for, I think we're outside for lawn games and lunch. And then I think later on for snack and uh, some other things, the schedule is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be pretty much jam-packed with entertainment. And, I mean, to be honest, I think that, you know, the three of you who are speaking – is just a small little chunk of the amazing speaker lineup we have. I don't know if you guys have you guys seen the speaker lineup other than yourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. we have we have the guy who invented the Atari and Chuck E. Cheese. He invented both the Atari and Chuck E. Cheese. To well, me, how awesome is that guy? Yeah. How how often is lightning strike twice like oh, that? Wow. He invented my childhood. Basically, I've I've loved my childhood forever. I've never met the inventor. You should you should tweet that. <laughs> I'm gonna tweet that. I will tweet that. Tweet it. I'll I'll retweet it, John. But yeah, he's he's giving the keynote. Uh, he's giving a keynote, I should say. Uh, Michael Lapp, who I think is a big deal to lots of engineers. I know that John, you're hot. He's like one of your personal heroes. Um. Like, the speaker lineup is just amazing, and you guys are a part of that, so I'm really excited. Like, um, there's two tracks, so I'm really excited that we're going to be uh, taping some of, taping the talks so that I can make sure that I can catch all of them after the fact, um, after I've sobered up a little bit. So I might have a drink or two while I'm there. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's basically a can't-miss opportunity to be on an island in San Francisco in the summer with some of the best tech people in the world. And, I mean, I, need, I, I don't really know who's attending. I, I haven't seen the list of people who are attending, but I imagine, given the speaker lineup, it's going to be a bunch of people that I, I'm going to be so happy to meet and be able to interact with. Um, I think it's going to be, there's going to be an awesome hallway track is what I'm basically trying to say. Definitely. I Definitely. think the hallway well, tracks, I mean, that's, that's why I go to conferences is basically for the hallway tracks, meeting people and talking to them and, and hearing new ideas and sharing ideas. I mean, that's, that's to me what conferences are about. And, and it's good that you're recording the tracks because I have a terrible habit of choosing a track and then wishing I was in the other one. Yeah, that's, that's the conference conundrum, if you will. That's the one thing that, that everybody says. It's like, oh, a multi-track conference, what am I going to do? What am I going to choose? And I mean, I know we were talking earlier before we started the broadcast, Jim. We were talking about RailsConf, which is like three, three tracks plus a vendor track. Yes. So if there's anybody who, if you want to see their product, that's now you're missing three talks, or you're missing two talks and a product that might be totally beneficial to what you're doing. And you have to make those choices. And you know the logistics. I know talking to uh, Kobe, Kobe from 
com freaks, the logistics of trying to record all that is like immense. Oh, crazy, yeah. Um, yeah. But if it can be done, by all means, do it. Yeah. Just because it gives people the opportunity that if, you know, if if I see you know one of you guys talking and I strike up a conversation with somebody about it afterwards, I might not get to the next talk, but I still want to be able to see it. And you know, I don't want to have to feel like I've made the hard choice and then you know, miss some talk that might be the best thing that's going to change my life ever. If that makes sense. It's it's the fun challenge of a multi-track conference. That's, yeah. That's I, I don't think there's a single person on this call that has not gotten bitten by that that sort of bug there where they, me, they pick the wrong one or then they hear they're on the then they, they go to one and they all their friends that are on the other one's like, Oh man, this is the most amazing talk. I cannot believe you missed it. <laughs> you know? And then exactly. you're like, oh, so then you have like feel guilt about it and everything and you know. This is a problem yeah. that's not just that just comes up for conferences. I have similar feelings around like whenever I get a new Peter Cooper Press email and I have like twenty five thousand blog posts to read and I instant paper only you know five hundred of them and I try to actually read fifty of them and I never <laughs> actually what I'm, what might be the greatest thing ever that I will never actually lay eyes on. Always yeah, we, exactly. We, world yeah. Where we can never actually get enough information. Yep. 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 Yeah, if we could just oh, eliminate yeah. this stupid sleep thing. I know. I hate sleep. It'd be coffee. If only, if only we were like Bill Gates and we could just like hire somebody specifically to read blog posts for us and then tell us what they need. Yeah. Isn't that what Twitter is for? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <No. yeah. laughs> I think that's for Hacker News. <laughs> Twitter just yeah. fills my Insta paper queue really quickly. Twitter doesn't give me a really nice way to filter based on like what I think I should be reading. Mm. Startup opportunity, everyone. You will make millions. <laughs> yeah. And it happened here on this call. I want in. True. I want True. in. I believe that Hacker News has weird leans to it anymore. I don't know. What's that? Yeah, Hacker News even anymore kind of is, it kind of, it, it has this very odd sort of vibe. I mean, there's a lot of really good stuff, but then you get kind of caught into this whole, you know, early stage startup random crap going on, you know, somebody else trying to solve another first world problem, you know, just like, oh, come on, you know. Exactly. <laughs> I, well, I, think, I think a lot of it, too, and, and this is not to pick on you, John K. Paul, but it's, it's like they're going through a Reddit syndrome. Where yeah. the amount of original content versus the amount of uh, recycled content is at like a minimal. Like you're very rarely getting a new idea or a new concept. You're basically getting the same old arguments with the same old politics recycled again and again. Or advertisements for why combinator of all of their you know great startup incubator services bullshit. Exactly. Are you talking about Hacker News in particular, or just all of these places where you could get news? Um, I, I'm talking about hack. I'm I'm talking about Hacker News specifically. So I don't go to. So my, I'm very much on the Twitter track of life. Like I, <laughs> if if something makes it popular enough to Hacker News, I'm sure it'll become on come on Twitter for me anyway. I don't actually ever go to Hacker News. I don't know what happens on Hacker News and like read the comments or anything. But if for me, Twitter is the place where if you follow enough people. Eventually, if something is actually good, it will be tweeted enough that even if you're not paying attention the whole time, you will come to your attention. Right. So someone will have tweeted five hours from now, but I won't be looking at Twitter, and then I'll tweet it tomorrow morning. Chances are I'll click it then. So it's fine. Right. It's kind of, it's kind of like the, the old Twitter rule. If I see someone say it once, it's mildly interesting. If I see someone say it twice, now I have to click the link. Exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of evolution there, I think, on on how that stuff is getting you know broadcast. So we're 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 at an interesting apex point on that. You know, the Reddit's and everything of the world are you know there's there's a lot of interesting discussion and stuff. But it's like you, I think the point you made really well, John, is it's 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 more things you have to dig into to kind of find the good stuff. And we only have so many hours in a day, and not all of it is going to be digging through the annals of Hacker News and Reddit and all of these other places to figure shit out. You know, we just kind of want to be told, okay, you know, this is what's going on. This is what's, this is what we, this is interesting and paying attention to. You know, let it float up to me that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting, too, because actually, I mean, generally the way I find myself on Hacker News is through Reddit. 
or through Twitter, um, depending yeah. on who you follow. I mean, there are some young whippersnapper to put it, to, to put it politely uh, vivacious, uh, precocious folks that are on Twitter that are also members of you know communities that I'm involved in, like Ruby, that uh, refer to Hacker News quite often, and I generally don't click those links. But, um, you know, generally if I see someone who's pointing something out, I'll, I'll look into it. Or if I see it pop up on Reddit, I'll look into it. Um, which kind of, as an aside, you know, working for Condé Nast, John K. Paul, I need, I need some Reddit swag. You need to bring me some Reddit swag. Ah, I don't know if I really get easy access to Reddit swag, I don't, but I will try my best. I bet you have easier access than I do. I, that's probably <laughs> true. I have easier no, I, access to ours Technica swag, but let's see what happens. I will try my best. All right, all right. I actually, I'll, I'll email, I'll email the the uh, powers that be right now. All right, because I actually the the interesting aside to that is, I guess part of Reddit is housed in the same office as the San Francisco HQ of Engineering. Hmm. And oh. so, um, one of my friends in marketing, Kelsey Schimmelman, and I decided we would go down to Reddit and ring the door, and we brought a bunch of T-shirts, and we were going to do an exchange. Mm -hmm. But they were very serious about you have to mail us and set up an appointment first. They wouldn't let us in the door. So. Oh. Uh, which, oh. I mean, I don't know why. I'm a totally normal dude on Reddit. Like, come on. Normal dude on Reddit, yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know if you know. So officially, so Condé Nast doesn't actually own Reddit. We are just both owned by the same company. Right. It's like the, the, the we didn't evolve from monkeys, we evolved like from the With same With monkeys, line. yes. Yeah, so similar ideas here. But if we can teach sign language to chimps, you should be able to communicate point, with Reddit. Point taken, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right, so let me think. Are there any more questions revolving around Distill? Um, have any of you guys ever been involved in a conference that was like this that really doesn't have something that's language specific or um, where the goal is really to improve the lives and work of developers? Actually, yeah, there's quite a number of conferences out there with that in mind. Uh, the, the big one in Ohio is CodeMash, where we have oh, yeah. Java and .NET and Ruby people and Python people and uh, JavaScript people, and they all come together, and it's a great, I love those kinds of conferences, because there's a great deal of pollination between the different cultures there, and, uh, um, you know, you can even, you can even learn a few things from a Python guy, maybe. It's possible. Yeah. You know, all, all I ever hear about CodeMash is, oh yeah, I totally played guitar with Jim Weirich. <laughs> How is CodeMash? Yeah, I totally played Code guitar Mash with Jim Weirich. CodeMash is the one in Sandusky, right? Yes, yes. In in January in Ohio with indoor um, 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 swim park. Water yes. park, yeah. Water so, park. So, yeah. Every, Water so park. I tell people tell me all the time how cool of a conference is. I'm I'm in Ohio. I'm literally like an hour away from there. But yes. every single year I miss the call for papers because I just completely it, it just completely falls off my radar. So whenever it's open, <laughs> somebody just needs to let me know because I'm totally need to get into that conference. You need to get into Code Match. Code Match is awesome. Yeah. But yeah, there's I other conferences too. Uh, Strange Loop, I think, is a really good eclectic mm -hmm. type of conference I where they're kind of a little more edgy, a little more on the edge of things. Uh, but but again, cross platform, cross. Um, Discipline type thing, and that's what I, you know, that's what I hear about the still too is going to be like that. So I'm quite excited. Yes, Definitely. I'm actually going to walk through and and I'm going to hit anyone who tries to uh, proselytize their own toolbox. That's my new plan. To to do, just, do what to their own? Toolbox? I'm just gonna, I'm going to punch them if they try to proselytize their their toolbox and say, you know, oh my language is better than yours. That's not my language happening. is better. Ah, than yours. Ah. <laughs> I heard that, John K. Paul. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is going to be recorded and on YouTube, just an FYI. I have I think evidence. We should, I think we should just like make people say, you know, why their language is worse than other people's. You know, to, you know, fight, fight me with the crappiest part of it. You know, because we all kind of have like everybody's language has this like you know this this kind of like redheaded stepchild piece to it, right? Like PG My whole talk is, is about that. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I know, I know. Everybody's burning their ears and everything. You know. Well, when, yeah, when I do guy, and I know that the I, I know that we can't, you know, get the array syntax. You know, every every single array function has the syntax is completely different. So I know that's true. 
and we're the only language of config file, but, you know. <laughs> when I do technical interviews, one of the questions I like to ask, uh, you, know, you know, given whatever the person's favorite language is, I will ask them, if you could change one thing in that language, what would it be? And you can always tell the people who have just had a really lightweight exposure to whatever language it is because they'll say, oh, it's perfect, I love it, you know, there's, I wouldn't change a thing. And anybody Wrong. who's using any technology for any amount of time will have a whole list of things that they will uh, rattle off to you, well, it's, you know, it's, it needs fixing here, or it's too slow, or, or, you know, this part's bad or something. So that's a really good indicator of how deep you are into something. True. True. Yeah. Also, don't trust somebody who's built their own framework because they don't like all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of conferences that are really cross-discipline, one of the ones, my favorite, I wasn't able to go there this year, but I was at the first one they did, um, was WhiskeyWeb in um, Edinburgh, Scotland, um, that they do in April. That was a really, so it's, it's kind of ran by a lot of folks that are from the PHP discipline, but it's extremely cross-discipline in a lot of the technologies and things that they're talking about. Um, and I, that, that was kind of another one where you're getting some interesting mishmashes of ideas and thoughts and everything. And, you know, and if you're a Scotch guy, you know, they do a Scotch tasting at night, so you can't beat that. Right. I, I, was, I was actually going to ask, being called you know, Whiskey Web, is it anything like Ruby on Ales where it's pretty much just drinking throughout the day, the conference day? Or do they, do they wait until the sun goes down? They're, they're polite enough to wait till the end of the day. Actually, I don't know where they did it this year. Last year, they did it in a an old church that was converted into a conference center. Wow. Um, and yeah, yeah. So it was it was really it was really a cool venue. Um, but they had um, one of the local distilleries come in and do a whiskey tasting. And I found out all sorts of nitty gritty details about you know the different varieties of scotch that I don't. The the mind is still boggling with all the knowledge I have in it. Um, <laughs> But outside of that, no, it was, it, I, I think it was really, really interesting. You, you, we were starting to see a lot of cross-discipline ideas, and we weren't talking specific to a language. We were talking specific to tool sets and problems. And I think as developers, I, I think this is kind of the next evolution step we're hitting into. We're, we're away from the specific technologies and stuff that we're accustomed to, and you know, it's no more like this mud slicking fight between, you know, oh, PHP's better, Ruby's better, Perl's better, if anybody says that. <laughs> and Python or Python model. You know, it's it's how do we solve problems? How are we doing interesting things? You know, I, I hear of more PHPers that are looking at things like Go than than if I would have been back five years, I would have never seen as many PHPers looking into alternative language unless they were entirely pissed at PHP, right? right. Unless they were looking to jump the ship. So And it, everybody has that night. Oh yeah, of course. But it, it's 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 really interesting. We're like I, I think and this is kind of, I guess, some of the concepts I'm, I've been like really pondering when I was putting in my talk is that I think we're we're at a point now where we're looking to solve problems. We're not looking to build tool sets necessarily. We're looking to actually really solve problems. You know, we we see where there's holes and there's things that we need to get done. And you can even argue JavaScript is kind of the language that neutralizes everybody because in the end of the day, that's kind of where we're all. You know, we all kind of. Everybody from every language is mishmashing in this area to try to do stuff at the front end. So we're right. all kind of touching that area. We're just thinking of how how the back ends need to perform to get to that point. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So I have a question. Uh, we've been talking about different technologies. I, I'm interested from the other speakers. What other alternative technologies have you been looking into recently? You know, outside. You know, if you're a JavaScript guy, what non-JavaScript thing have you been looking at? If you're a Ruby guy, what non-Ruby thing have you been looking at? So I have. Uh, so I'm predominantly a JavaScript guy, although only recently in Node. Um, my last hackathon experience was uh, let's try to learn Rails, which was a lot of fun because ah. I, I happened to read a Ruby metaprogram or metaprogramming in Ruby. Yes. Which, which taught me about like about how Ruby and JavaScript aren't actually that that crazy different <laughs> how some pieces of it work. Um, I've also had uh, some like Scala interests just because one of my friends, New York has a big Scala community and it happens pretty often that you run into people who are obsessed with Scala. Mm -hmm. um, neither of which I could probably get paid a dollar to actually write Ruby or Scala, but they've been fun. 
So, so for me, um, so I'm predominantly a PHP guy. Um, I've been, you know, I think with everybody, we've all been kind of starting to dabble in Node.js a little bit, um, and just kind of seeing what that's all about. And I think there's some interesting things coming there. Um, I've been less dabbling in a lot outside of that. I've been less dabbling in individual languages, but I've been looking, trying to look at some interesting patterns of, of problems that are being solved out there. So I've been really interested in things like webhooks. Um, I've been really interested in the web component model um, and some of the interesting stuff that the HTML5 spec and it's kind of early coming down the pipe that um, are coming that is coming out. So like the Lithium project from Google um, and things like that. Um, been really, really, really interested in that. I think there's there's some really interesting promises to how the, the, the web is getting itself advanced and and those are kind of areas that I've just kind of started to dabble and learn a little bit more about and some of the problems that they're looking to solve. Right on. And uh, I know I'm not a speaker, but the one thing I've been looking at lately is uh, Python kind of started, you know, kind of, I, I brought in a guest speaker who is a, both a Rubyist and a Pythonista. Um, to our Ruby group a couple weeks ago, and he kind of got me turned on to a few things. So I've been kind of messing around here and there, and hopefully we'll have something, you know, viable that I can stick up on GitHub and have a little toy project in that. Um, I also noticed in the chat that Tasha said she's been looking into Erlang, which is pretty mm. interesting. Oh. Do you want to <laughs> do do comment on that at all, Tosh? Or are you just are you gonna hide in the comments, in the group chat? The safety of group chat. And uh, Evan, you you've been working on Chef. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I am a Rubyist pr primarily, but uh, doing uh, the uh, the Panda kind of thing with uh, which also gets into uh, pro serve type of stuff for our company. Uh, we do a lot of. Um, custom cookbooks and custom chef recipes and stuff like that for our customers. So I've been kind of getting into a lot of um, chef stuff and kind of kind of best practices of chef because uh, um, it's it's one area that really hasn't been touched uh, a lot and it's finally starting to get um, some exposure is, is that uh, it, it, traditionally people wrote all these you know chef recipes and then they're all kind of Everybody did their own kind of style, and so people are trying to bring everything back together and, and figure out how to, you know, make, make like kind of like almost like a standard um, of how to write this stuff. So I've been kind of looking at that and like how to test the stuff, and it's it's just it's it's a whole world unto itself. Absolutely. How to test chef? That is something I would love to hear more about. There, there, it's a lot out there. Not because I ever want to do it. It's just because <laughs> I want to do it. Like it's insane, and and it's it's a, a lot of it's very platform specific, or, or and even like uh, operating system specific. Like, you know, we we run Gentoo, but a lot of the stuff is written for like Ubuntu and stuff. So it's it's kind of crazy. All right, and I actually got a comment. I got a comment from Kevin over here as well, saying that uh, he wanted to mention that he's looking at at SQL to generate JSON directly. Um, mm -hmm. He said there's a neat column based DB that that's great for huge data sets. So that sounds pretty interesting. But he's not going to tell us what the column-based DB is? Nope. Crotton, do you, do you want to comment on that in, in IRC and let me know exactly what you're referring to? Hana from SAP. Ah, uh, Hana. Interesting. Yeah, now I'm totally curious. Now I have to, I have to transcribe this IRC log. So I can see it. Whoa. Natasha is now somewhere in Africa with sunglasses on. In the Serengeti. But we still can't hear her. Um, so I think we're about to wrap this up. I do have one weird comment that came in over Twitter. Um, John K. Paul, you apparently also know Jessica Palmer. Uh, I do. I, I do you, you also know Jessica Palmer? I, I do because she went to school here in Buffalo. Ah, oh, awesome. We worked together for a little bit. Yeah, we used to, we used to hang out back in uh, the mid-90s. She was a fan of uh, a band that I was in, and we were good friends. She's an awesome person. I agree. That's cool. Small world. Sure. New York yeah. State, big state, small world. Yep. But uh, I want to thank you guys. Um, first, Jim, John, and John for, for coming out and taking the time to talk to us. Um, I want to thank you know Tasha, John, 
Jacob, Evan, Kevin, you guys for hanging out and providing questions. And I guess from here, we'll see each other in a couple weeks. Sounds in good. San Francisco. Definitely. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Joe, are you still awake there? You look like you're uh, half out. I'm good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, all right, uh, we'll see everybody soon. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you so much, PJ. Yeah, Talk thanks. to you all later. Thank you, man. Take care, thanks. everybody. Bye.